Check. Yes, we're live. Yes. Hello. Hi, Dr. Dila. I'm so happy to be here with you. And I'd like to welcome all our viewers. I am particularly excited about today's topic. Thank you so much for doing this with me. So, <clears throat> of course, this is this is a conversation that I've been wanting to have for a very long time. So I'm really excited that you, uh, you know, you've come out with this topic. So you, you, you are doing this class called Relationship for Strong Women. Is that it? Yeah, it's called oh my Powerful God. Women Choosing Relationships. Powerful Women Choosing Relationships. Oh my God. Like just the, just the topic and your poster is like so there's so much energy to it and this is so interesting so I'm gonna I'm gonna jump right into like the beef of it I really do want to ask you like how did you get inspired to create this class yeah um this class is for the women in the world and it is inspired by the women in the world and how the particular class got created is I work with a lot of women, as you know, um, and I work with them in my classes, but I also do one-on-one -on -one sessions and I do ongoing sessions and coaching work as well as healing work. And um, it was getting to this place, uh, probably, I don't know if there was something in particular going on in the world or just women have been dealing with this for so long. And then kind of by January this year, it was just staring me in the face where I had the most incredible, powerful, intelligent, amazing women that I was working with. And yet the things that they were feeling about themselves or that were projected onto them or that they were made to feel where they were made to feel that they were too much or that they wanted too much or something was wrong with them um, if they wanted to have their career and relationship or they wanted to um, stand in their sexual power or they wanted to um, you know be very successful in their career as well as have a great relationship it was and it sounds almost unbelievable in 2021 that we're having this conversation but for me when you ask me what inspired this class is it wasn't the cognitive conversation that I'm having with you it was how much it hurts and it creates this twist and it creates this very very deep disempowerment for these amazing amazing women and I'm sure it's generational. I'm sure it's happened for millennia. I'm sure this is not new. Mm -hmm. And I know that the women in the world <laughs> will know what I'm talking about. And for the first time, like seeing, seeing how even though these women could understand cognitively that it was okay and they had choice and there was nothing wrong with them, the fact that that is not what they were experiencing emotionally, energetically, and in their relationships yeah. uh, inspired me to create this class, hopefully so that we can create some healing and some more empowerment around this topic. You know, actually, I love it. And one of the things that you said was like, so, like, so bang on uh, where you said that so you had these brilliant, uh, amazingly strong and capable and powerful women who constantly felt wrong for choosing themselves. And that is like, that is a conversation that I am so like looking forward to jump into with you because yes, you're right. It's like years and generations of entrainment, right? So for people who come to you with this, like, uh, is is this class going to sort of heal it from that from that you know the generations or because it's so like you said it's so you're, you we do know it cognitively and yet when we choose ourselves and it is always as though we need to make that choice against our family or against the men we are with or against our children and I'm not only talking and I'm so glad uh, Dr. Adila for this class also because you said this is for all women so this is not in particular for those that are uh, you know looking for a romantic relationship but also those women who are like stuck with like family 
say, having to convince their parents that it's okay for them to not choose to get married or to not choose to settle right now because they had like they, they have vision for their career, for example, or to you know want to experiment with things like living in with someone before they decide to uh, you know take it further. And the kind of slack. I have friends who receive that slack on a constant basis. I have I have friends who call me up and say like, I'm when I'm out, I feel like I'm the queen of the world, and as soon as I step home, it's like, I, I'm 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 not valued for anything that I know how to be. So, will you please tell us a little more about this program? Like, what are we going to address? And like, there is so many places to go to. Like, I would say every woman in the 21st century should attend your class. We, the class that we're doing on the 30th, so it's next Friday, is a, it's a three hour class. So we do these body whispering focus classes where we focus on going deep on a particular topic. What I love about the body whispering focus classes is it clears things and it heals things in your body as well as in your energy. So yes, we will be diving deep into this healing aspect and some of the ways that this kind of creates issues in people's lives as well is that very, very deep frustration that gets created within women. And yes, I agree with what you said about this is for women of all ages. So also women who are 40, 50, 60, women who spent lifetimes giving up what they would like, giving up what was possible for them to choose, even giving up their voice because it created more in that moment for their family, for their husbands, for everyone else's careers, for the children. The deep frustration that it creates and the anger that's often suppressed along with the potency and the power that is suppressed often creates major health issues, often creates a lot of symptoms in women's bodies can often create a lot of chronic issues. And the funny thing is, it's almost like the more placid <laughs> a woman seems on the outside, because there is no such thing as a placid woman, really. <laughs> Every single woman is so powerful. And it's almost like the more placid, the more appeasing, the more peacemaking <laughs> that woman is on the outside the more that internal struggle and pain has been. And sometimes it does not even, because they've had to separate from it so much in order to live that life for that many years, they don't mm -hmm. even realize how angry and frustrated they are. Yeah. But the body creates all of these symptoms and all of these pain and, you know, ranging from like um, really common things are digestive issues. So like things like irritable bowel so syndrome, things like indigestion, okay, one example. The other is people might relate to those problems in the reproductive area, problems with menstrual cycles, problems um, with ovaries, uterus, womb area, um, because those are areas where we disconnect from the power energetically in those areas as well and try and act like, we um, we don't have as much intelligence, capacity, and potency as we do. Yeah, I mean, everything you're saying is just like bringing up so much stuff for me as well. Like, uh, uh, you know, I watch the women around me and I have a daughter who's 11 and I keep asking like, what can I be to ha for her to have a like a different world, you know, for her to not have to ever suppress everything she's being and you're so right on like having problems with the reproductive system and with the ovaries and all that because you get to a point where you just hate being a woman because you just you know it, there's so much projected and expected out of you and even though I see like a, a lot of it changing now I almost get a sense that it has to be from this space of fight and not inclusion so when you say separate, what actually popped for me was like, how much do we separate from the power of being a woman to fit into a man's world? So like, there's so many things that we we give up, which is naturally feminine to adapt to, you know, to, to a male dominated world. And even though 
we live in the 21st century and you so rightfully said that we're still having this conversation it is so interesting that just recently i was having a conversation with someone who was letting me know how someone who's been in a marriage for over 20 years is still getting physically abused mm-hmm. financially abused mm-hmm. you know so there is a cost at which you are being the perfect mother or the perfect wife or the perfect daughter or the perfect daughter in law and i really think it's time to change that and i'm so glad you think the same way too and along with like so many other women out there um so dr adila would you like talk to us one of the things that you wrote in the description of the class which also kind of was like very very interesting for me was you also spoke about having to sexually suppress ourselves uh, not being able to express yourself sexually because it wasn't okay so what has your experience been with that in terms of the people that come to you the women that come to you and like how will this class actually address that what i have seen the most and even what i have experienced was like when you're a powerful woman and actually the more in tune and in awareness you are of your power the you often get two things directed at you a it's like how can people stop it or control it or b how can people have it because <laughs> it's very very <laughs> alluring <laughs> so women and the women that i work with and this is what creates so much of that head fuck excuse the language You're but right. is is these again these women who in in the 21st century you are told you are a female you are allowed to have choice you're allowed to make choices you're allowed to be sexually free you're allowed to experience the things you would like to and then they go out and they um choose relationships or um even a fling or even a one night stand because they are in their right to do so and yet then all of the twistiness and all of the yuck and all of the projection that they then have to deal with not just from men but by the women in their lives <laughs> by their <Yeah>. own free <laughs> okay <laughs> so that's one thing the other thing is when you're trying to find a partner or you're trying to find the the number of very very amazing powerful women who um when they are not yet in the relationship the men will do so much to chase them and to pursue them and want to lock them down into that relationship right and then once they are in relationship and often once they are committed or even married then suddenly everything that they loved about that woman and everything that made them want to chase and own and have that woman as their partner are all of the things that they make wrong about the woman and tell them that it is too much that they cannot act like that that it's provocative that it um is facetious <laughs> that it's wrong and then the woman doesn't know what to do so she makes herself wrong she doesn't know if she is leading people on she doesn't know how she can have her sexual power and her desires and her natural energy without upsetting her husband or partner or mate and so it becomes again another area where she either has to give up her natural way of being or often relationships do not work long term and then when we see that repeated cycle with these powerful women of relationship not working right multiple mm-hmm. break or even multiple marriages yeah guess who gets blamed for that it's a powerful woman it's a good point the wrong woman or a bad woman or a woman who cannot hold on to a man or a woman who must have something wrong with her because, because if everyone too- else can be in a marriage why can't she <laughs> Yeah, it is always almost like her choices are made so wrong because if she's career oriented then which man will want to be with her if she doesn't want to be a homemaker or if she's career oriented and you know uh always not so much at home then you know the blame anything that happens with the kids is always her fault and it's like this is crazy but like oh my god I am like so super excited about where this class is going to go. I do have a question though. um what i wanted to know was that you know um dr adila i consider you a very very potent woman and you do have a successful marriage so uh what like kind of what are some of the things 
so where I'm coming from is also like with this generational entrainment, like will this class begin to equip those women to have, I know that like when, when one looks at a powerful woman that has it all, has it all. I mean, how, how many times have we heard about you can't have it all, right? Like that's, that's the truth in this reality. But for someone who does have it all and like who's coming from this space of choice and not having to give herself up, will this class also sort of like at least begin to build a sort of a different foundation from which pe- these women can begin to choose? Because it's almost like they've never had this education. Uh, for most of us, we've never been told that you can have it all. For, for us, it's like you primary is relationship always. And then you are taught to sacrifice in that relationship. And if you, God forbid, choose a career or choose something different, then it will and has to come at a cost. Yeah. Oh. So um, there is a lot that we have to unlearn so that we are not then like bleeding our generational hurts over the men who can be wonderful partners to us. And I do want to talk a little bit about this other side of possibility, because this also, I want to be very clear that this class is not about making men wrong. This class is not about bagging men. This class is not about making it men's responsibility to allow us to stand or have our power, right? Yeah. About actually allowing those men who are, because they do exist and they are wonderful, capable, Conscious. May I just pause you for a second? Will you please repeat that, that they do exist? <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know what? I literally had to say to my husband, look, after all these years, I'm finally, do- I, I don't do classes on relationships um, because uh, I understand that what I have is a little bit unique. And so I don't, facilitate in this area in um, open classes normally because I don't want to make I don't want to make people think that there's something wrong with them when they don't find a relationship like this but I did say to my husband hey after all these years I'm finally facilitating a class on relationships so you better not fuck this up now (laughs) I'm so glad you set the tone straight (laughs) No, but um, <laughs> they do exist and they also there are more and more men because just like we women have been doing a lot of work on healing and a lot of us are seeking consciousness and alignment and greater healing men are on that journey too in different ways and in their own ways but they are that they, they are and my life is filled with wonderful men okay we have wonderful friends and my husband is a wonderful man. Not perfect, wonderful. And what I want to help women realize is A, these men exist. And also how to A, find them. Because often uh, something that these women do is because they have been conditioned to believe that there is so much wrong with them who they are looking for to be in relationship with are not these kind, loving, generative, contributory men. They are the men that actually reinforce the beliefs and the experiences that they have had until now. And then they really think that something is very, very wrong with them and that they are not cut out for relationship and they are not cut out um, to be successful in long-term honoring uh, whether it's marriage or life partnership or whatever you want to call it so that's the first thing that I want to also look at in this class but then the second thing is how do we then as powerful women who are so primed to like we have been trying to deal with combat or avoid all of the stuff that is projected at us our whole life how do we not go running in the opposite direction when we do find a loving, generative, potential partner? Oh my God, that. Thank you so much for that, because that was going to be my next question. That when you are so, when you are so conditioned to be wrong, 
when you do find someone who like kind of you know is willing to contribute to you and is nurturing and sees you as absolutely valuable you it's almost like we can't receive it it's almost like you're waiting for the other shoe to drop and it's crazy how i've noticed uh, you know me included how very often i tend to also like almost like i have to test this as though it's real and i'm not be able to receive it in totality because you're like so used to that conditioning or being wrong or that this person just wants me to be happy and nothing else and is actually willing to see me grow and you know and um, yeah and I, i'm so i'm so glad you 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 touched upon this and uh, of course i totally agree with you that it's not about making men wrong it this is not about one is better than the other it's just about how to have a different reality not having to give you up and i for me the worth of the class is already there i've already received it because you said they exist <laughs> <laughs> well i <laughs> i was thinking about this because because i knew we were going to have this conversation today so um I was actually thinking about this because it's definitely a journey. It's been a journey for me. So um, this is my eleventh or twelfth year um, in relationship with my husband. We've been married for six of those years, and I the majority of that time was spent in me needing to make sure I didn't run away. You know, I didn't that. because that desire and need for independence. and and knowing that i'm independent right like knowing that i can actually do and succeed and have anything i want and i don't need a man but how can i invite and have and enjoy the fact that um this wonderful relationship is here and it contributes to me and how do i not um sabotage that because of all of the projections or the fact that everyone else seems to think it needs to be a certain way or that um no one else can understand that you know yeah. or how to not let um all of the conditioning of what will eventually happen i spent probably you know out of these 10 11 12 years like i probably spent like 8 9 of them like waiting as you say for that other shoe to drop i was always yeah. like well something's probably going to happen now like this is too good yeah. to be true and and you might as well run away before the other person runs away from yeah, you you I might as well quit <laughs> right and and so it is definite and how to be honoring of a powerful man because the fact is powerful women who are standing in their power need a powerful man Absolutely. you're not, you're also not going to be fulfilled having a yes man as your life partner like someone who um you allows you to treat them like a doormat someone who never challenges you someone who doesn't have their own potential that they wish to fulfill and who isn't successful or independent in their own ways because yeah. you will often find that you are then um bored or you don't life isn't exciting enough or you feel like they are needy and we don't yeah. want to be needy and nor do we want needy partners so it's very very intricate like the layers in this are incredible i've looked at a lot of the layers in this cuz i've had to be very present with creating my relationship so that i didn't sabotage it or get these have these energies come into play and in observing that for myself and then being able to work with all these women and my clients and i have wonderful male like the male clients that i have are these men which is why i know they exist right cuz my male clients are wonderful amazing men who many of them just like my female clients you know i've often been working with for years and they've started to become friends and acquaintances and and they're just good people they good yeah. people Yeah. good people need this like we are good people and we are all deserving of good relationships and honoring Absolutely. them and so i know that they exist on both sides so how do we bring them together how do we get everyone to get over their crap 
and actually be in relationship with each other and still not have to give themselves up up yeah yeah because then when you come together you can still have you know reality society your parents your family everyone else's projections will still <laughs> be coming at you so then how do you still not succumb to that yeah well it sounds wonderful dr dila and like while you were talking there like a couple of things that were just like sort of popping for me as well that um you know it's also like like you said that we keep waiting for the other shoe to drop because you're so not you're so not trained to receive this kindness or nurturing you always as a woman taught to give and even for men like they they're so trained to provide that uh, if they don't if they desire to just like let themselves off and like just go and do things they love it's almost like there's a sense of guilt in their world that they're not providing for their woman or they're not providing for their children uh where the woman is actually completely capable of doing that but it just doesn't fit into what this reality or the society or the family states and like to be able to create a relationship and a reality beyond that is so inviting because i also get that this class is so perfectly timed because it is available like that space is really available and there are more people asking for it and my other question to you really was like you said that you know you said that you you are independent and you don't really need a man right and i i very often feel like that however i do like the occasional somebody opening the door for me or like getting you know getting getting something for me that i didn't have to, or just lifting my bag or and like as an independent woman it's also something that i find myself refusing so very often because there's almost this need to prove that i'm an independent woman but i i do I do genuinely enjoy that hey you know can I do this for you and I want to say of course like you know so how do you balance that from like yeah I don't need a man but if I am going to have one I'd also like him to open the door for me or get me gifts or like treat me like a princess every once in a while so would you be like talking about like having that that balance it it doesn't mean you're giving up your independence and being independent doesn't mean you need to separate from this uh, availability to this, this um joy of just receiving um yeah. you know and and that goes also like both ways like you're also like you're allowed to receive that and you're also allowed to like you know cook a nice meal for your man or iron his shirt and not be yeah. like oh my god i've turned into like a domesticated housewife like you're yeah. allowed to do things that are honoring of each other and also like you've probably heard the term love language like we all have like a love language right and yeah. the more aware we can be of what our love language is and realize that actually if we allow ourselves to receive it whether it's like being showered with gifts or if it's physical touch or if it's quality time or whatever 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 it is for you that's a why are we here like if we there is no point being here in a body and also no point being here on a planet populated with other people in bodies if we're not going to like reap the benefit of that and get to enjoy the physical aspects of it the emotional aspects of it the connection of it and you know there is it's so intimate a lot of those things that you talked about and that's a huge part of this is the intimacy that people crave and that they cannot find and so when you're talking about receiving that opening of the door or you know just that feeling of i don't need someone to look after me but someone is there who is going to look after me ultimately yeah. the intimacy that that creates and having someone that has your back um allows you to step more into who you are yeah allows you to receive more of them but also more of you and in this class next week in the focus classes we do have a format that we follow and it's why it's a 3 hour long class is there's facilitation or Q&A time so we have discussion time facilitation time and then we have the body whispering session and then we have like the healing element right 
So in the healing part of the body whispering session, that's when the energy um, healing goes in and it clears all of these places uh, that we are holding on to, um, places where we do not let that intimacy in, where we are blocking ourselves and stopping ourselves from having relationships that truly contribute to us. And also, it's about being able to have everything like how can you have intimate relationships with your friends with your parents with your partner and with your children and yeah. still have yourself yeah i think yeah. a lot I, of it is about finding like coming back to you and to having you to stand in yeah. right yeah i love it i love it i i just well, i i want to just um also like put it out there that is it fair to say that this relationship, like you said, at the onset is for all women? So whether you're in a relationship right now, whether you're looking for one, whether you've just gotten over one, whether you're divorced, whether you're separated, whether you are looking to just like like have it with yourself so that you can have it with everyone else, right? So it is just something that is open to everyone or if you're willing to step into something new so that it becomes available to your children, whether they are boys or girls. Uh, I have both and I, I would really like a different world with relationships for both of them. And um, yeah, so I mean, <laughs> I don't want to give the class away, but oh my God, I have a feeling you'll have to do a part two. A part I know, two. I'm <laughs> thinking that too, because I'm thinking, how are we going to get through all of this content? But um, yeah, it is absolutely for all women. And as I said, this is the class very much inspired by all women. So that these women who are at every one of those stages that you've just talked about, just getting into a relationship and not wanting to fuck it up, just coming out of a relationship and having so much hurt and baggage that they need to process through in a long-term relationship and feeling like you can't remember who you are and where your power went. Um, you know, like whatever stage of relationship you're in, whatever age you are, whatever your thoughts or feelings are about being in relationship. This is one area where the more I look into it, even for myself, and the more self-awareness I get, the more it contributes, the more we can change those triggered, ingrained behavioral patterns where we don't even realize we're creating self-sabotage behaviors um yeah. so i think it's highly valuable and it's why we're finally doing this class <laughs> and, and i think it's uh, you priced it like a phenomenally low for the kind of content that we've just happened to discuss on an fb and like this is a three-hour class where you're going to really get down and dirty with all of us um <laughs> it, it is phenomenally low so guys check it out it's, i will be sharing the link with all the details um oh. yeah sorry dr Dila, you were saying something i do no, i, was I just do gonna say it is it's it's like 99 dollars if you're a b country and um 125 if you're one of our a list yeah. and that includes yeah. body whispering group sessions so yeah um my hope with pricing the focus classes at that price point, but especially this one, is that we invite as many people as possible. This is not a class or a topic where you need to have any prior information experience or have been a body whisperer or have attended any of my other classes before to get the benefit cognitively as well as energetically from attending this class. Yeah. And, um, if you, you know, even if you don't think it's for you, if there is a woman in your life who you think could benefit from this, I would yeah. be so grateful if you pass this on to her because it's truly a conversation that I would just love to have to empower more women around the world when it comes to this topic. Yeah, and if I may add that if you are someone who works with women, this, this class may also be like something that you can add to your repertoire of tools and stuff that you already know and you know you there's never enough right to empower people also I genuinely believe that uh, as a woman when you take a step to sort of break free from years and years and generations of cultural and social conditioning you also make available a space for the men to sort of step up and show up for you the way they, can, they really can no matter what they've been up until now and I am so grateful for that invitation.
So I'm in <laughs> and <laughs> completely. <laughs> and uh, of course, uh, you know, uh, everyone who's watching us and like, I mean, really, this is just, it's it's amazing. I'm so grateful for you, Dr. Indila. And I can't wait to be in the class. So we just, we have exactly a week and I'm yeah. going to be sharing the link. Now at this time, we're going to be in the class. Okay, yes. so it's three-hour class at 7 to 10 p.m. New Zealand time. It's, I believe that's like 11.30 to 30 in India. That would be about 8 a.m. Uh, European time, Central European time. So we've kind of timed it and priced it to be as inviting and as available as possible to as many people from around the world to join us. And if you really want to join us and you're, you're not available on that day, you will get both the audio and the video replay. And you're welcome to send in your questions before the class so that I can address your questions, your concerns, or whatever you would like me to cover in this class. The classes are very interactive, um, time permitting. And um, we will do, a few, like, I will be hopping on Facebook a few times this week just to talk about this. So for those of you that are maybe on here and we've run out of time for questions today, but if you want to type your questions in, I will get around to answering your questions later on or later this week. So, um, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Adil. I can't wait for the class and I'll see you soon. And Really, uh, every conversation I have with you just gives me like so much more of me. So I'm really, really grateful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Take care. See you. Bye.